What's up, everybody? It's the homie Truth Teller, the street reporter. Welcome to the Truth Hurt Show. Uh, this episode, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck episode this is. I just know we're going to talk about the drill culture, things outside the drill culture. If your chest ain't strong enough, you need to run the fuck up out of here because we're going to talk about a lot of shit. We talk about life shit over here. You know what I'm saying? We talk about shit really going on over here. You feel me? So this shit like a shoe size. I don't know what size you wear, but you might fuck around and fit this shit. So... First thing we're going to speak on, um, I did an interview with Taekwon Real Lil Buck, but we spoke on a lot of things on that interview. He spoke on Duck not having a mural. Uh, people, not celebrities, not coming out there throwing events on 63rd, not doing charity events and giving back like they do in O Block. I thought that was strong. Um, o Block Durkey actually responded to that. Uh, in a comment on social media that says, it ain't my fault, Dirk. Uh, ain't my fault Duck signed to could have been records or something like that. I thought that was real strong. You know, I thought that was crazy to say, to be honest with you. But I understand they come from a different size. Duck and just a lot of people. Dirk, he got love for us. So I can understand his temperament towards, you know, Duck. But I thought that was strong, too, because, you know... A lot of people feel like, man, look, it's a lot of celebrities go visit 64th and, you know what I'm saying, King Drive, they be over there in the old block. Rich people giving out hundreds of thousands of dollars. They doing give backs and nobody from the op side can come through there and get anything. These book bag drives and all kind of shit, turkey drives and Christmas drives, none of the op kids come through that. I thought that was strong, you know, um, to hear that, in my opinion, and share that in the culture. You know, the pick and sad shit is thick, you know. He said it seems like the whole city clicked up. I thought that was real strong. One thing I can say about Duck, and I can say the same thing about Vine, it's like they had the Midas touch. Anything they touch turned to go. I mean, if you deliver them a fucking pizza, you can do an interview, a rap, a song people want to hear about your experience being around them, you know? That's one thing I can say. It's a lot of people who gain notoriety from them guys. Duck and Vaughn did features with their homies. It's guys who don't got a lot of clout who got songs with these guys and shit like that. Duck and them went stingy with the clout. You know, it ain't a lot of features that Chief Keep gave away. Ain't a lot of features that Dirk gave away. Ain't a lot of features that G Herbo gave away to guys in their hood and shit. King Vaughn was famous as hell. Duck was famous as hell, and they were still doing songs with their guys in the neighborhood. They didn't hog the clout. And I tell people that because it's hard. Look, normally people don't open doors for people, you know? People don't just open up doors, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these doors, you got to crack them bitches open and you got to do what the fuck you got to do to get through them doors. You know, Duck and Vaughn had the heart where they opened up the door and allowed their homies to come through that shit. I thought that was dope, you know what I'm saying? Another thing is, man, you can't be out here mad at it because niggas ain't riding with you. People ain't supporting you, you know? Look, look, your goals is like a pair of glasses. They only meant for your face. Some people not going to see your vision. You got to understand that some people are not going to see your vision. And you can't always be so quick to forgive people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it can be cool. Yeah, you can forgive them, but you can't forget. You can't be so quick to forget it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, yeah, you can forget people. My bad, you can forget. But you can't be so quick to forget shit. Because this era right here, this ain't the era for good hearts. If you got a good heart in this era, shit, you should stay in the house because it's dangerous for you, you know? Number one rule, and I tell people this, you know, especially now with this being 2023. Remember, I keep telling you, you got to protect this version of you. You know what the fuck you went through in 2022. All the bogus-ass people in your life, all the drama, the back and forth, the he say, the she say shit. You left that shit in 2002. You got to protect this version of you. Put that bleep back your heart and protect your peace. You know exactly what went through. I know you miss them people. I know you, you know, you feel bad. You feel lonely. But remember how they left. You got to keep that in your head. Don't never give a motherfucker an opportunity to disrespect you twice. You hear me? Don't never give a motherfucker an opportunity to disrespect you twice. You feel me? You stand strong. Fuck all the memories. Fuck all that lonely shit. You tough. That's why I don't never trip, man. I don't trip about shit, you know, because I realized it was a dirty game a long time ago. On some real shit. Just to be honest with you. Keep grinding. Yeah, this shit going to get tough. It's not going to happen overnight. Slow money is better than no money. I tell people that shit. I, people say, you fell off or you're doing this shit. Look, man, I would never own ever fall off. You know, I tell them motherfucker this shit. You know, fast money don't teach you a lesson. Slow money, you learn from it. You know, I'm okay with slow motion. I'm just not okay with no motion. 
Remember that shit. You either gonna grind this shit out or you gonna quit. They both gonna hurt. They both gonna leave you tired. They both gonna leave you mentally drained. So what you gonna do? You either gonna quit or you gonna keep grinding because they both gonna put you through this shit. You know, just to tell you this shit. Remember that shit, man. Y'all seen that video of the Americans in Mexico? It's like four Americans was out there. It looked like some guys with machine guns and big ass guns pulled up on them, forced them to get in the truck. Like they kidnapped them and shit. We seen this. So far, two have been found, two have been killed. What the fuck happened? What the fuck happened to them people, man? Motherfuckers talking about, oh, they, they might have been the police. Well, if this is the police, why the United States is offering the rewards? I don't think that was Mexico police. That maybe it was, because it's a lot of dirty shit. I got friends who told me that they were robbed in Mexico, and it wasn't a cartel, it was the police. I say, damn. So, you know, this kind of feel a little cartelish, in my opinion. You know, that's why I feel like it's more safer to fly into Mexico than to be driving into Mexico. Because you don't know what these streets is. You don't know what lies around that corner. There'd be a lot of shit going on in these communities. But, you know, if it wasn't for a camera capturing that shit, you know, these people will probably be somewhere we'll never know about that shit, man. This is said, I want to know what the fuck happened. I want to know what happened, and I think the president and all the leaders need to band together and figure out what the fuck happened. You know, I heard they went to go do an operation out there or something, man. I don't want to make it seem like Mexico is so dangerous because, shit, they killing motherfuckers out here every day. You feel, your brother riding around, blah, 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 blah. He done blicked every motherfucker down in the neighborhood. Every motherfucker scared of your baby daddy. So I don't want to make it look like it's just Mexico. Shit, it's dangerous out here too, but we seen that shit on camera. We want to know what the fuck happened. In that interview with D, I mean, in that interview with Taekwondo World, we also talked about D Rose. He told me two members of Taekwondo World got paperwork. They named in paperwork on D Rose 600. You know, I still find it strong that a lot of people say D Rose is innocent. You know, in my opinion, I don't know. I can tell you this here. A lot of people say, is D Rose going to come home? I say, shit, I don't know, but it looks like it's going to be strong for him to come home. You got to remember, I done said this in plenty of blogs. He was identified in a police lineup. His picture was circled. Not just identified, his picture was circled, okay? It was statements made against him in a courtroom when he was getting prosecuted. This guy said they seen him open up a van door and get the blick in. They said they remember his face, he be in music videos. You know, that's strong. Not only that, D. Rose was questioned in the murder of another young rapper by the name of Joseph Coleman, who go by the name of JoJo. He was released, though, but the police questioned him about that murder. It could be because of the internet chatter and shit, but he was brought in and questioned. During the trial that he was convicted of with Venzel, see, they and Rondo name came up in that trial, even though it didn't go nowhere, but they name came up in that trial. Later on, those guys were convicted of a murder of a cab driver. That don't got nothing to do with it. Uh, D. Rose but the fact that you know those names are Lincoln plus he been questioned for multiple shootings so he has a lengthy background you know like I said in order for D. Rose to come back on the streets he's gonna need more evidence way more evidence to unconvict him they got all this evidence to convict him they gonna need all this evidence to unconvict him you know unless they got gang of evidence you know the person who really killed Vinzel walks in and say hey I'm the person who did this, okay? It wasn't D-Rose, he's innocent. Unless you're willing to do that, I don't see D-Rose coming home, in my opinion. You know, and it's sad, too, because things that he did when he was young, he's going to have to deal with when he's a grown-ass man. And I find that I find that very crazy, you know, in my opinion. But, hey, you know, I'm pretty sure Venzel family probably don't find that shit cool. They probably want him to stay in there forever, you know? Chief Keith name was almost brought up at that trial, but his lawyers fought not to have Keith Name brought up in that trial, you know, just to keep linking uh, D. Rose to, like, street shit. Remember, his name is D. Rose. D. Rose uh, is like a basketball player, a shooter, so he renamed himself after a shooter. So all these things just kind of give a temperament on D. Rose to try to beat that case. I think it's going to be strong. It can't be hunches of feelings to just somebody saying, he didn't do it, somebody else did it. Nah, that ain't gonna work. You're gonna have to have evidence to prove he's an innocent man in order to do this. And with the culture not talking or snitching, I think this is gonna be hard in my opinion. That's just my opinion, though. Another thing, man, and this is very strong. We gotta, I want you to keep this together. 
Watch who you take advice from. It be some bitter ass bitches out here who will who will help you fuck your life up. Who will help you leave your baby daddy. Help you tear your family up. Don't fall for that shit. It's some bitter ass niggas out here too that'll help you leave your baby mama. That'll tear your family up. Get you on these streets. Get you on the wrong route. Don't believe that shit. I tell people this shit all the time. Don't let no one who ain't never been in your shoes tell you how to lace them up. You know, don't let no motherfucker who ain't never been in your shoes tell you how to tie your laces up. They not telling you from experience, from going through this shit, from being hands on. They telling you from fucking imagination what the fuck they think. Yeah, this just feels right, baby. Don't let nobody scream at you. Leave them. Man, they don't understand. It's not going to always be love every day. You know, you got to have more than love to keep a relationship going. You got to have respect honor, you know, knowing that I value you more than to be arguing with you today and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, fuck living your life by quotes. Remember that, you gotta live your life by real shit, not no fancy ass quote. Just cause you get, look, just cause you got Bible lyrics, you got Bible quotes in your bio on Instagram, don't make you spiritual. Remember that shit. Just cause you got some cool stuff that God said in your Instagram bio, don't make you a, 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 a kid of God. Remember that shit. It's your heart. It's not how you act. I'm tired of that. I'm, I'm Ray Charles and I'm deaf when it comes to motherfuckers, man. You got to show me. And I still can't see it. You got to do more than just show me. I got to feel it. You feel me? That talking shit for the week. Any motherfucker can tell you anything. You got to do what you got to do for you. Don't let no motherfucker tell you what you got to do. Because at the end of the week, ain't a motherfucker going to help you pay your bills. Ain't a motherfucker going to make sure your kid got no Nikes. Ain't a motherfucker going to make sure y'all got chicken and macaroni at night. Do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Just don't be out here robbing motherfuckers, man. Because robbing is kin to a hater, in my opinion. Taking from a motherfucker. You know how hard it is to get money. The fuck you doing out here just taking from a motherfucker, man. Crazy ass people, man. I'm going to tell you something. I want to share something with you that my homie told me. My homie told me, man, I got insomnia. I've been having insomnia this last week. I said, what the fuck is that? Insomnia? I said, you okay? You need some Pepto-Bismol or some shit? He said, man, I've been having insomnia these last couple of weeks. I ain't been able to go to sleep. I say, yeah, that's insomnia. He, yeah, man, but for some reason, it's, it's hard for me to go to sleep. I be tossing and turning all night. And I, I say, look, do you pray? He say, yeah, I ain't prayed in a while. I say, have you ever told yourself that maybe you don't got insomnia? Maybe you was going through things, the shit going on in your life. It's a lot of things you did in your past. It's things that you could do in your future. And God won't have a conversation with you right now. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever told yourself that maybe, just maybe, God is saying, I want to have a conversation with you right now, and it's the perfect time to do it? But instead of you not realizing that, you said you're turning your pillow over in the middle of the night thinking you can't sleep, when really that's your time to, you know, sit up and have a conversation with God and talk about stuff you want to talk about, and you keep pushing it to the side? You feel me? Just, you got to look at it like that. You know what I'm saying? And I always remember, everybody ain't your friend. You know, everybody ain't your friend. You know, just because somebody smoked a 3 five with you and drunk a Henny with you don't mean they your homie. And everybody you get in an argument with and a spat with don't mean they your enemy. You know, you got to look at this shit closely. Every yeah, motherfucker that gave you a few dollars don't mean they love you, man. They just know you value money and they can get your mental right just by giving you a few dollars. They don't give a fuck about you. Remember that shit. Money don't bring happiness. It just make your life easier. Shit that was hard to do, it make it easier, you know. Your car break down, uh, um, the landlord go up on your rent or some shit like that. You don't stress with this shit. Oh, okay, it's good, it's nothing. You know, little problems like that, you can fix because you got that money. But it don't stop heartbreak, it don't stop sickness, it don't stop you thinking about shit, reminiscing, you know, depths. That shit gonna happen, nothing money can do with that. You feel? And money's not gonna get you no girls. You gotta have the swag. You gotta have the game. You gotta have that that energy. You gotta have that vibe. That's what's gonna get you the girls, man. You know, you can be rich as hell, but if you ain't got no vibe, you don't got none of that shit, man. You ain't gonna get the girls. A, a, a girl will leave a rich nigga just because a nigga got time. Real shit. Like a broke nigga will win over a rich nigga because he can give them time and a rich nigga can't give you time. So don't let that shit go over your head, man. Just because you got a bag don't mean you safe. A bag do not mean you safe. You feel me? Charleston White and Lil Reese been going at it. Like, like going at it. Lil Reese kind of spoke on it on a Cam Capone interview. I thought what Lil Reese said was dope. You know, he clout chasing him. 
And I think that's true. I think Charleston White is clout chasing Lil Reese. You know, Lil Reese got the algorithms. He going to view very well on YouTube. A lot of people want to know about him. He mysterious. He finally now opening up and shit, doing interviews and stuff like that. I think Charleston White knew he was the perfect person to attack. You know, name drop. He know that everybody going to blog about that shit. It's going to go viral on the internet. I think Charleston White has turned into uh, 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 more likable Takashi 6 ix 9 you know, he about the police shit. He telling you that he a snitch. You know, he going at a lot of Chicago people. He's infatuated with Chicago. He loves Chicago. It's almost like he's confused. One moment he going at Vaughn. One moment he going at Duck. Next moment he going at 63rd. Now one moment he going at Reese. He don't really know who he beefing with. It's just he want to beef, you know. One moment he's supporting Duck Mama. He's supporting Tuke and them and dissing Vaughn and Mama. Next moment he dissing Duck and Mama. So it just seemed like, you know, he's very smart. He's very aware that the world is watching but I'm going to tell you something about Charleston White that I noticed as the years of him being on this internet. And my father told me this shit a long time ago, and he always tells me this. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, Charleston White didn't jump into this. You know, I didn't watch Charleston White turn into what he despised. I didn't watch Charleston White turn into, look, I didn't watch Charleston White turn into all the shit he was doing interviews about, talking about. Like, if you didn't know who Charleston White was and you was just to watch him on the internet and see him on the internet, he's not really a difference from a rapper. He dissing dead people. He's smoking dead ops. He's disrespectful to people's parents. He pulling guns out. Shit, what makes him any better than anybody? He was calling King Von a demon. What makes him better than any one of these guys? He didn't been convicted for a murder case and all kind of shit like that. You know? You feel me? I understand he, he do shit for the communities. He has to do this to gain a detraction. Then he can use the money from him to do some good. I get it. But if people don't know that, you look like these grammy ass rapper that be doing this shit. You feel me? You got to be careful, man. This internet should have sell you out. You might not sell out, but this internet should have sell you out. I didn't think this internet turn good people into bad people. Like, look, I didn't think the internet turn great people with gentle hearts and gentle mentals into bad individuals. You know, this internet shit how you scamming your fans. This internet shit how you feeling like you bigger than everybody, how you feeling invisible. It how you lacking thinking you still like everybody else in the hood when you're not. You know, this internet shit is dangerous, man. I tell people that shit, this shit get real wicked. And I think, you know, Charleston White is losing himself, in my opinion. I think when he first started off, it was dope. He had a beautiful mind. He thought different than everybody else thought. Even though it was wild, it was different. I think now everything he said is just like some shock value shit, in my opinion. But I think Charleston White is wild as hell, in my opinion, man. But that's all I wanted to talk about today, man. I'm finna get up out of here. We got some interviews we finna get ready and do. I appreciate the opportunity for y'all coming through. Keep the donations to yourself. It's hard out here. You don't got no time to be giving me.